Hi folks, and welcome back to the plot. Yes, gorgeous, gorgeous day today. And I'm at the scene of the crime. <laughs> the shed has gone. If you missed the last video, I had so much fun editing that one. Actually, I say that I did have a lot of fun editing it, but also something that has really surprised me about this shed product project, um, an almost overwhelming sense of guilt. <laughs> I felt terrible after doing that. That's kind of why I'm calling this the scene of the crime. Um, it was about halfway through the deconstruction of it that I really got hit by just a bit of a, a sense of kind of regret, you know, and like wondering if I'd done the right thing. It felt really bad that I was knocking down someone's shed. It clearly been built to last, you know, a huge amount of effort had gone into it. But thinking about it logically, the roof was completely gone, the floor was completely gone, the bearers that the floor was sitting on, completely gone. One and a half of the kind of sides were very, very, very bad. Um, the rest of the sides weren't, weren't actually that bad, but the ply on the outside was, you know, really letting in a lot of water. So it had to be done, but I still feel guilty. But no time for regrets. It's done now and I'm very, very excited about what's to come. There's lots to do today. You might notice that this kind of foundation is incredibly low in comparison to, you know, this ground up here. There's a couple of paving slabs there. And one of the first things that I, I kind of want to do, I got rid of the third compost bay. That's gone now to free up a little bit more space. And there's lots and lots of prep work that needs to go into this. One thing I wanna do, just rake a lot of soil in and level this a little bit more. And when I say level, I mean bring it up, really, because we don't want this shed foundation to be sat in a dip where all the water is gonna be running into and creating a really wet, humid environment because it's a timber base I'm gonna be using for the shed. You can see I did find some unsavory stuff, lots of glass, random bits of uh, metal. I don't know what's going on there. A Little bit of asbestos, <laughs> nothing too dramatic, but I'm starting to do a lot of thinking about the orientation of the shed. I was originally gonna just keep it where it is, but I might rotate it a little bit. I'm not too sure. This is the boundary between neighboring plots though. And you can see this is going to be an issue. The side of the old shed was the boundary basically. Um, the shed was built right on the boundary, so I'm probably going to have to put in at least, I don't know, a line of pallets or something just to kind of delineate. And, you know, my plot neighbour next door, you know, there's, there's, there's a bit of work to do. Um, so I'm going to have to try and design something that keeps all of these brambles and all of this from, from encroaching. Basically what I'm saying, I think I'm going to have to bring the shed in in slightly. But yep, that's one of the missions for today, starting to get this tidied up, get the glass sorted. I did find there's a bit of concrete in here, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's kind of gone, probably because I had a fire on it. But yeah, I don't know. I need to do a bit of investigation here. Just try and get it level. I do have something in mind for the foundation that should raise it up a little bit, so I don't need to worry about getting it too level, but we'll see that more in a later shed episode. There is plenty of other stuff I want to get on with today though, and I've got some fantastic news. I've bought a new toy, a new wheelbarrow. Look at that. We've got a home base nearby that's going out of, uh, you know, proper closing down sale. Everything is like 40% off at the moment. So I got a very, very good deal on this, like proper solid, really good wheelbarrow, 120 litres. And when I arrived, wood chip delivery. We've had a wood chip delivery. So I think the first thing I want to do today is get some more wood chip down on these paths and I want to do a bit of manure spreading, get these beds all sorted and ready for winter so that I can then move on to the shed project properly. Let's get some wood chip, shall we? Look at that, the maiden voyage, the first trip. <laughs> I'm so pleased to have an actual wheelbarrow. I have been using the scrappiest, like worst wheelbarrows for five years. <laughs> I do have one that I bought that was a little silver one, like 30 quid, and it's just useless. It can't even sit up straight with nothing in it. <laughs> as soon as you put even a tool in it, it just falls over. So a very, very worthwhile investment. This wood chip delivery uh, is looking kind of weird. I don't know what's going on here. It looks almost like bedding. Um, a lot of, I think it might have just really composted down or be a lot of like chippings, but uh, either way, it should be fine for the paths. I think it was literally just one video ago where I said it's been ages and ages since we had a wood chip. 
delivery and this is perfect timing. Some massive chunks of wood in it as well. Beggars can't be cheesers. So strange, it looks far more like compost than wood chip. Not sure I would trust this as a mulch or growing medium though. I'm warm already. <laughs> I'm so glad I got a proper big one because it means much fewer trips. And this is actually, we've got two little dump sites where they give this to us. And this is the one that's quite far away from my allotment. So <sighs> fewer trips is very good. There we go, mission accomplished. I am embarrassingly out of breath. <laughs> the first of many, I'm sure, but first I thought I'd just talk a little bit about these paths and some of the issues I've had. So wood chip paths, people have been saying to me for years and years, you know, get rid of your grass, JB, go over to wood chip, put down a membrane and go from there. Now, what I wanted to do, I didn't use membrane, but I did use cardboard and you can see loads and loads of weed growth, which has been a little bit, um, it's not really that frustrating. It's just untidy, isn't it? It's one of those things. And if I just put more wood chip on here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna carry on growing. But I have turned over a few areas of the plot now to wood chip, and in some places it's working better than others. It's not too bad here along the polytunnel. There's a bit of grass encroachment coming through a little bit on this edge of the bed. And I think here I used an impermeable membrane, so something more like a, a black plastic weed matting. I actually used vinyl flooring instead of cardboard. So that's what's given the good result there. But here in Fort Fox, excuse the defenses, two paths which are almost completely weed free, apart from this grass, which is growing in from the path. I don't think that really counts. If you look along here, all good and fine. And what's the difference? Two paths that I've mulched with cardboard and then used the same wood chip on. Well, it's very simple. I don't think it's anything to do with thickness of cardboard or anything like that. It's all about the thickness of the mulch. Can you see me there? I've got in the shade of the tree, gone completely dark. Now, let me go in the sun again. The difference is those beds, those scaffolding board beds, much, much taller. So I was able to put loads more wood chip on. I wasn't really worried about it pushing up against the sides. Basically, long story short, I just didn't use enough wood chip. I think that's the main issue with those beds. So if you're in a similar position, you know, you're trying out wood chip for the first time. I've had quite a few comments from people with a dim view of wood chip saying it hasn't worked very well for them using the cardboard method try more wood chip. On this bed, you can see a few days ago, I started setting out some of the cardboard. I left a little bit outside in the rain, which is another great tip I've had from the comments to really help you get rid of all of the tape, which you don't want to be finding in your beds. If you leave it out in the rain for a little while, it comes off so easily. I'm just gonna lay out another layer of cardboard all along here. There's always gonna be a few gaps. I don't think you need to be too precious about it. Although that's probably why I get a few weeds coming through, but you can't be scared of a few weeds. I do wish I'd left a little bit more cardboard outside in the rain, but alas. Right, it's looking quite bad. I can just tuck it under these beds because these beds still aren't actually anchored in in any way. And the idea with these beds was always that, that they were more borders than raised beds, but over time I'm finding that's just less and less practical. And actually they are gonna turn into raised beds and I'll probably need to replace them in a, a few years, but I don't mind that, that's fine. Um, and that's why I was pretty frugal with the wood chip last time, because I was nervous about stuff holding onto moisture up against these, but if I've got to replace them, I've got to replace them. The whole idea of these being low maintenance is uh, null and void if I don't do it correctly. So let's do it properly. People do always recommend wetting your cardboard down, but for whatever reason, this wood chip is absolutely soaking wet. So <laughs> I think it should be fine. Cardboard's not gonna go anywhere. you don't see very often, but 
very successful, very, very happy with this. I was always really worried about the polytunnel and having to swim up against it or having weeds or grass growing. But down here, I've used the same kind of final flooring, so a proper, proper weed barrier and then wood chip on top just to make it look a bit nicer, really, um, and bring the soil level up a little bit. And it's worked really well. But this wood chip is getting worse and worse. I do not know what this is. It looks more like kind of horse bedding or something gross, but it's so wet and gross and I don't really want to use it anymore. So hopefully now with the start of winter, we're going to be getting more high quality wood chip deliveries. We're very lucky to get them here. But next job on the list is getting in the beds and making them look a little bit nicer, getting them ready for winter. Now, I've been showing off this process quite a bit over the last the course of the last few videos where I've had a bit of time to spend at the plot getting everything ready. And I've gone through here and given it a pretty good hoe, but you can still see there's a lot of green in here and some of that green is dead, it's dying back, it's, it's weeds that are now disconnected from their root balls and they're just going to add organic matter to the soil like that one. But there's still a bit of grass, so I'm going to give it another quick hoe, get that dislodged again, pull up. These grass clods are basically indestructible. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's just cooch grass, but this stuff, you pull it out of the soil and it will just carry on going for ages. And then you bury it in manure and it, it sets root again. So I'm going to get in here, pull a few more of those out, quick light hoe, and then on with the well-rotted manure. This would be a good time of year to be using raw manure as well, but I don't have any. So well-rotted manure it is. maintain there is nothing more beautiful in the garden. Maybe a big basket of tomatoes in the middle of summer, but outside of harvests, it's magic, isn't it? And I always feel a little bit like I'm cheating when I put down this well-rotted horse manure and like I'm sweeping everything under the carpet, especially as you will have seen, there's quite a lot of green material on here that will kind of add just a bit more organic matter and break down over winter. But it's not just sweeping stuff under the carpet. It does really, really work very well at preventing that weed growth throughout winter. I am planning on covering these with a membrane at some point later on during the year, but I'll let it weather down a little bit. And I do like to do this in spring as well, but with a much lower quantity. So winter is when loads of it is going on, especially this year. And this year I've really gone added, the seagulls are going crazy. But yes, I put way, way, way more on this winter than I normally would. Normally it's a bit more of a kind of light covering. This year, full on mulch, everything's had a good, I don't know how many inches, a good two, two to three inches of this stuff. You know, three or four bags on, on these beds. And that's because I've had so many issues with the soil texture planting out this year. So do this now. In theory, I will put a bit more on in spring and the spring mulch is fantastic because it, it sort of dries out as the weather becomes drier and it really seems to help reduce that slug pressure on a lot of your early seedlings and crops. The most annoying thing about this I've found and with no dig approaches in general is that when it comes to plant out it's really difficult to keep this nice layer on top and you end up with all this soil that you have to put somewhere and then it gets a bit more mixed in. I used to be really precious about that but I think the the only solution to that is just not caring. Um, and just dealing with it, basically. But very, very, very happy. Now, folks, you will never believe what I've done. The unthinkable, the unbelievable. I've massively misunderestimated how long everything was going to take. <laughs> Impossible not to, I don't think. What I really wanted to do was get, th get this leveled today, basically. Uh, I thought I could do this and the beds. And uh, yes, I've 
pretty much run out of time. It's coming up to six o'clock. What I do want to do is get all of this timber from the shed that I want to recycle in the, probably the polytunnel is the only place that's going to fit, but it's quite wet outside at the moment and I haven't got any tarp or anything for it. But before I do that, I have just borrowed a magnet. Oh, look at this thing. Never seen anything like this uh, from Elmo, who has everything you ever need at the allotment. And I'm just going to run this through, get as many nails and you know various bits of metal work as I can. Because although there is a, a new shed, which is going on here, I think it just seems, I don't know, more like the right thing to do to at least um, pick up the majority of these nails. It's just not very nice. And oh, wow, this is very effective. And there is going to be an awful lot in here. Look at this. From just one very, very quick path. Lots and lots of screws, nails, and various bits of metalwork. So this is going to keep me busy for a little while. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. An extra special thank you to all of my patrons who have helped me buy the wheelbarrow and the manure that you've seen today. And of course, my Chili Pepper Tier patrons. This is really, really heavy. Tony, Bill, Pam, Mel, Michael, Sox, Dorcasaur, Angela, Andre, Brett, and Louise. Different order, but I did get it in one. Hopefully, see you again next time.